Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you to Glenagans for inviting me here to speak today. Um, I was thinking, and this is not what you should be doing, uh, preparing my presentation on the train this morning. I was thinking about what kind of experience I want to give you, and I think twofold. I want to kind of make it a little bit interesting, but also a little bit pacey. Uh, pacey probably because I've got a large amount of slides in the, in the next 20 minutes or so. So what do I want to talk about? I think the best thing to do is to start with uh, a fairly big statement. Um, we've heard from Alan already uh, about what's happening in the industry, and I think I want to echo those, uh, those issues in many respects. I actually think that for us in the industry, in all our various forms, that we're actually in a really exciting time at the moment. We're ex exciting time because I think there's a change of awareness in terms of what our buildings represent, not just in terms of the market opportunities, but also in terms of how we design uh, and how we think about our buildings. And I want to kind of share with you some of those thoughts and ideas, so um, bear with me on that. But with every big statement comes uh, the small print, or if you're doing PowerPoints, um, big print. Um, it's all about the attitude. And I think one of the things that I'm seeing more and more is those organisations that are understanding that sustainability isn't about environmental imperatives or about environmental performance, it's about the social, the economic and the environmental issues come together, are actually seizing the opportunity. So this conversation which we're having today, and I think many more uh, as well, it's about how you look at the construction industry, what products, what services you're offering to the industry and the customers. And I think that's where it gets really exciting. So if I'm sticking with this whole big sort of statement issue, where do I go next? Well, big picture. Why are we seeing a change in awareness, a change in consciousness? How do we know that we need to improve our buildings? And how do we know uh, what we need to do to, uh, to change them? And I think for me, one of the moments of that change of consciousness is when Al Gore jumped on his scissor lift and went up and actually pointed to the top of the graph with regards to <coughs> CO2 emissions. There's probably many more examples uh, besides that, but I think it's a really good sort of snapshot in time. But you're not here to sort of listen to me talk about environmental issues. The, the, the kind of the subject we're talking about is how do we actually look at the opportunities? But for me, as I said already, they're not disconnected. If we look at environmental performance, if we look at social need, how we manage our buildings, how we work and live in our buildings, they are completely connected. And I thought um, the quote from the Financial Times there was a really good way of embracing it. Those organisations in the current economic climate, and you've heard already from Alan already about some of the drivers, some of the issues, and some of the, the metrics there, those organisations that are seeing we need to think about this in a much more integrated way are those that are performing better. And that's, I think, an important point to bear in mind, that we, when we look at our products, when we look at our services, we need to look at why we're producing them and how we're producing them. <coughs> but it's not just about um, our generation. It's also about understanding what the next generation are seeing as important. Those drivers of the future will be equally as important. We're doing a lot of work at the moment at BRE around what does the next generation of our product and services look like? And it's very easy because we've been successful, and, I, and Alan mentioned that Glenagun's been around for 40 odd years or so. BRE's been around for 90 years. The Bream standard's been around for 22 plus years. It'd be very easy for us to be complacent in what we do, but we need to look forward. We need to understand what the drivers are. And actually the changing needs and the changing perceptions of what is important is incredibly important to make sure our standards evolve. And I think some of those issues about what are, what are those drivers uh, as really helping our thinking. And with that comes big opportunities. I've was, I was been talking to a number of recruitment agencies. I think they're great litmus tests when you talk to recruitment agencies about what are the opportunities that are presenting themselves in the marketplace. And some interesting statistics talking to a number of them about an increase in jobs around the environmental issues. You know, uh, organizations looking to see how they can work to develop the performance of buildings, improve the performance for clients, understanding how they can provide additional services to clients in terms of saying, well, I can offer you a building, but I can also improve your performance at a corporate level. So the space already being created around opportunities in terms of the environmental uh, impacts of our buildings, and I think that's important. So that, does that get us to this point now, I suppose? 
of having a perfect storm, that we know we need to change. We're seeing some of the opportunities driving the marketplace. But there's a little bit of uncertainty in, in terms of what that future looks like. So let me just share with you, I think, some of the issues and opportunities. And I think what is quite amazing, we haven't prepared or, or practiced our presentations before we arrived today, but there was a massive amount of similarity with the statistics that Glenigans have actually uh, shown you already, which is encouraging. Um, so for me, and some of you might recognize this, those of you who've been uh, in the industry or uh, working in this space for quite some time, uh, I've stolen uh, without remorse uh, the UK SD strategy kind of sort of diagram there. Because I think there's, there's, there's drivers here which are driving change and ones that we need to be sympathetic to. So if we're going to grab the opportunities of making our buildings more sustainable, we need to build capacity. We need to build capacity in terms of ensuring that we're making the new products which are based better for our buildings in terms of um, how we drive uh, performance. We need to exemplify. One of the things that BRE does particularly well through our standards is ensure that we actually sit ahead of regulation. We allow the industry to play. We allow the industry to look at what good performance looks like and actually demonstrate it to clients, demonstrate it to the world. So having outstanding buildings, bringing outstanding buildings which can be seen to be better than, than the norm is important. That space allows the industry to innovate. We um, are in a very fortunate position to see lots of the new innovations in the marketplace come to us, come to us through the way we look, assess our buildings for the standards we use, and actually working with the industry to try and actually help them take those products, those services into the market, and actually then capitalise on is in a really exciting space. So that uh, exemplifying, I think, is important. And what we're doing more and more is to try and make those opportunities export opportunities. So we're doing a lot of work with UKTI at the moment to take UK expertise, knowledge, design, and actually it, show it in other uh, uh, other world cities. So we're we're building innovation parks in China, uh, in Europe. Uh, we're talking about building them in Canada and India as well. And the whole idea is to showcase what the UK can do well, which is about thinking about buildings and pushing the envelope in either in design or in terms of the products themselves. That's really exciting. What's also important is when we talk about how our buildings work, how our buildings perform, we need to engage the people that live in those buildings, work in those buildings, because we can have an incredibly high-performing building, but if we don't communicate with the people that live in that space, it won't maintain its credentials, but also it won't be understood. So there's a lot of work we're doing there in terms of educating the market. So building the capacity, enabling, exemplifying in terms of demonstrating what we can do, capitalising art for export opportunities, but also communicating, engaging with, with people. And, and what are some of these transforming factors? So for me, one of the biggest ones, and I'm going to touch upon it again in a few moments, is, is the debate about low carbon. Low carbon technology is a big driver. We also need to make sure that if we're going to seize these opportunities, it comes back to that second slide, it's all about your attitude. We need to actually make sure we transform the industry. You know, it's very easy to look at buildings uh, in the way we've always looked at buildings. What we're seeing with a large number of uh, developers now is they're changing their business model. They're saying, historically, we've grabbed the, gra uh, we grabbed the land, we've built the buildings, we've walked away. Quite a few uh, developers, contractors are now saying, are there better business models to actually make uh, high levels of income by thinking about service models? So I'll come back to that service model concept at the moment to see if, if, if it's worth exploring further. We're also having lots of conversations with central government. Uh, uh, there, are, there is a passion within government to really make sure the economy comes alive, really sort of kicks into the next gear. We're seeing that with changing in terms of legislation. So we're seeing that in through the MPPF in terms of changing uh, issues there. We're seeing that in other ways as well. So there's a large amount of political drivers to simplify, to speed up economic growth. But in doing that, we, may, we need to make sure we don't lose the opportunity and actually go back to some of the buildings we constructed in the 70s where we were more worried about the quantity than the quality. And if we get that wrong again, then we can get those mistakes uh, happening again where we will build buildings
things which are not good places to work and live and then actually cause social issues uh, as well as environmental issues. So we're seeing lots of issues here from central government which are driving the industry and we need to make sure that we're brave to respond to them but we also challenge them to make sure they're the right ones. This slide I think was quite interesting because I was penning it quickly on the train. It really does, does, does echo what, what Alan was been talking about before. In, in, in this debate around where do those opportunities exist for us, I actually think there's a, there's, there's a fantastic opportunity looking at our existing buildings. If you look at the potential of some of our older buildings to <coughs> retrofit them, to refurbish them to higher standards, to understand what are the elements of that building which we can improve, there is a massive opportunity there. It's not a challenge for the faint-hearted, that's for sure, because if we look at the fabric of some of our older buildings, they might be listed, uh, they might be difficult to change. But that's where we need to bring those materials, that science, that understanding in. And what BRE are doing a lot at the moment is developing standards to ensure that we can measure the performance of those buildings, which then enables us to make better decisions about how we retrofit them. And I think that space on the retrofit market is going to be really fascinating to watch much more. We've also um, know, or you may, you may agree or you may disagree with me, about our changing environment. I put up the slide, the Al Gore scissor lift slide. We need to make sure that when we think of our buildings today, we are looking to the future. We need to think about are they going to overheat? Um, how do we make sure that if they're in areas which are prone to flooding, and if all those that you're reading uh, the various newspapers this morning, there are some dramatic photographs again of flood events hitting cities. We need to make sure that if we think about our buildings, we actually adapt those buildings to respond to those challenges. You know, we can either build them outside the floodplain or we can make them more resilient. We need to think about there the materials, the location and the technology we use in those spaces. What's also interesting in terms of these opportunities, and it comes back to that building capacity on the northern axis of the of the diamond is we need to change the industry. The industry, the construction industry, shouldn't be seen to be this place which is, is all about getting your hands dirty. We need to get people from universities coming into the construction industry because they, they want to be part of this interesting, sexy, challenging debate. So the perception of jobs in the industry needs to change. I'm a firm believer that the construction industry isn't moving as quickly as it needs to. I've mentioned it in some of the slides already, but if you look at some of the technology we have in our pocket, our technology, our phones, rapidly change year on year. We need to actually bring some of that thinking into our buildings. We need to have quicker innovation cycles to really capitalize uh, on what we're, we're doing. But this debate, and I've mentioned about carbon, isn't for the faint-hearted. If you look at some of our carbon targets, uh, looking into the future in terms of carbon reduction, we have a massive challenge. So if we do the back casting, if we do the analytical analysis of where we are and where we need to get to, some of the regulatory drivers, some of the legislation that is over the horizon, either at a UK level or a European level, will really drive us. It comes back to that quote, those who are reacting now, it's a stern type issue, those who react quickly will capitalise on the opportunities. Those that stand back uh, have an opportunity to actually miss out. I mentioned already this issue about product to services and I think it's a fascinating space. Uh, we're seeing it much more at BRE in our conversations. If we're looking about building our buildings to become more effective, it isn't about just doing it once as an engineering or as a product provider, it's what service sits behind that to maintain that standard. So we see that around energy service companies and water service companies, but there is a massive opportunity in the marketplace thinking about the support in terms of how we actually provide a good service to the customer through the life of the building. That's, I think, something which is going to really become a, a big driver. So when we talk about construction, it's not just about the bricks and mortars. It's not about the first fit. It's about the service to that building as well. Always good in presentations to actually make sure you bring the audience back to reality. Uh, and I wanted to share with you um, some of the, the areas I'm talking about we're working on already. This isn't just about the theory, some ideas that was constructed with some coffee fueled moments on a train. We're doing a lot of work and we have been doing a lot of work to try and demonstrate these principles. And 
I think a good example, and it's still a good example, is the success the UK has had with regards to the Olympics. We were all very proud of our athletes um, over the last sort of months or so, but we did a lot of work to make sure that the buildings that everybody enjoyed during the event were as sustainable as they could be. We made sure that the, the work that BRE did with the supply chain drove the change that I've been talking about, thinking about the materials that we used to make sure they were low impact, to make sure the buildings we were designing could actually be used in legacy mode, to make sure they were adaptable, so that they had a primary purpose for the 60 days, but their 60 years after the event was just as rewarding and just as good as it could be. And those issues, I think, are a really good synopsis in terms of what we need to do. We need to respond, we need to challenge the industry. So making sure the industry is responding and actually thinking rather than just following and just accepting. So what does that actually mean for us? Um, and as I said, we're, we're doing a lot of work at the moment in doing a reflection of, of what does sustainability mean for BRE and the standards we set. So you know, the standards that's been mentioned uh, in the Glenigan's database and the web tools already, we're doing a lot of work to say, well, what more can we do to make sure that that the standards we create are really, really kind of working forward. So we're trying to ensure that we're creating standards that get the industry to work together, to get people to really integrate, to make sure there's a real connection, a real understanding of regulation and voluntary standards, and how the work on voluntary standards that sit ahead of regulation inform regulation. So if I go back to that diamond, if they're not working, how do we ensure that we incentivize? Do we need tax incentives? Do we need fiscal measures? Do we need some way of actually making things come alive if they're not working? Also, this issue about innovation cycles. We really do need to innovate. We are good in the UK at innovation. We just need to be braver sometimes at applying it. And that's about risk. How do we make sure that if we have innovation, we have low risk environments, or we have acceptance that it's okay to get it wrong sometimes? There is also an important element here, I suppose, about uncoupling. How do we build better buildings, but do it at a in a way that doesn't increase the cost? And that's one of the biggest challenges. And there's a lot of people who are thinking about this space around uh, modularization, about standardization. And we're I noticed on the um, delegates list, a couple of people, Will McDixon here, are, are thinking about schools and how do we actually think about doing standard designs that we can actually provide high quality environments for the students who work, who, who are educated in those schools, but actually keep the costs down. We need to think about looking at our buildings differently to try and actually embrace those. I mentioned carbon to be a key driver. I'm a firm believer we shouldn't use carbon as the only driver. If we want to build high performing buildings and we just build low carbon buildings, we forget about some of the other social issues. We forget about water, which is becoming important. We actually forget about the community that building sits in because we might remove some of the windows. We might actually try and actually make that a, a highly sealed environment. So those, for me, are the challenges that we really need to think about. And what's important if we're making this shift, I don't want sustainability to be this, this issue that we keep on adding to our building design. I think the analogy, and I use it a lot when I do presentations, is if we were a client and a contractor 15 years ago, and the client said to you, build me a building, and I want you to build it with no accidents at all, you'd probably turn around and say, well, that's fine, I can do that for you, but it's gonna cost you. I need to train my staff, I need to get some new PPE. You go onto a construction site today, that is accepted as standard. We need to think about sustainability in exactly the same way, that it's business as usual. It's not something you add to a building, it's what you do day in, day out. And an interesting reflection of some of the conversations we're having in the office at the moment is, can we actually make our standards design tools so that you can make quicker decisions about the impact of your building as you're designing it? So you can actually look at the, the sourcing of materials, you can look at scenarios. So if I add this technology to this building, what's its payback period? And if energy prices go up 5%, does that payback period really become really quite interesting to the client as a proposition now? Because if we can start to use our standards as modeling scenario tools, it means we can make more effective decisions and better informed decisions. And I mentioned already that we need to think about this quality and cost issue. How do we get buildings to be better? How do we make sure that 
it isn't just a space to work or live. We're actually providing more productive spaces. We're providing spaces that, because of the way the airflow or the lighting works in the building, it's a joy to work in the building. It's a great space to actually have conversations and you feel more energised rather than you walk into a building, you've got no natural daylighting or the air quality is poor and you don't make your staff as productive as you can do. So that social issue related to that economic uh, uh, issue is important as well. And on a final series of notes, I just wanted to, to just come back to that point. I'm not talking here about hypothetical issues. Uh, we're working on a, a number of buildings uh, worldwide. This is, this is one in China where they've approached us and we're working with a number of people to see if we can actually make some of these buildings look beautiful, interesting, um, but also low impact. So this is, this is the, the energy flower, the Wuhan energy flower in China where they're trying to get a bream outstanding building and they're trying to do it in a way which really uses the best technology, the best thinking. Because if we don't actually get it right, if we don't seize the opportunity, other countries will seize the opportunities of actually building better buildings and they're exporting that technology and those skills back to us. So we don't want to miss. And another interesting one, just to finish on, um, this is something else that we're having conversations with about. If we look at sustainability, uh, it isn't just about thinking about buildings for our own personal needs in office spaces or retail spaces. Uh, this is something we're, we're, we're in conversation with a couple of people about is, if you think about farming, for instance, buildings can be vertical farms. You can actually bring products and services closer to the places that need them. So when we talk about thinking about building better buildings, it's about thinking about why we need certain buildings, what purposes they can provide, um, to try and actually facilitate that debate. So um, thank you.